Welcome to episode 5 of the Neurocar engine project, the objective of which is to start this engine. So the purpose of this episode is to try and get a spark out of this ignition system. So I got the flywheel off and I'm looking at this and this is um, a very early magneto ignition system. And I recognise some of the key parts. That's the that's the points there. That's the primary coil. Uh, that's the secondary coil. That's the high voltage or HD coil there. I think this is a very early form of condenser just here. Um, it's got some evidence of stuff being soldered to it, but there's no. I can't really work out quite what was connected to where, where this wire went, where that wire went. I haven't really got my head around it quite yet. Um, either I can make this work or the plan B would be convert it to a coil ignition, which will, should be fairly easy. So one way or other, we're going to get spark out of this. But I think first things first, I need to start taking all this to bits, get all of this off, get the points mechanism off and see if I can make a new... Um, just here, there's a, a, a small bit of sort of uh, fibrous material that was inside that and it was it pushed against the cam and opened and closed the points whichever way whichever way we go i do need points uh, uh so i've got to sort that out first so i think that's what i'll do get all this to bits get that out and see if i can make a new little um piece to press against the cam so let's do that so now getting very close up and personal with the points so this lever on basically presses against the cam on the inside of the flywheel and moves backwards and forwards and you can see the points opening and closing like that now this um this little fiber block is broken was was basically in here and you can see where this has been rubbing on the inside of the cam so this fiber block is knackered and I need to make something new, and uh, I'm probably going to use this this stuff. This nylon, very thick, hard nylon. Um, going to make something out of that. But what I need to do is I need to remove this pin. I've centre punched it to see if it will move, but it won't move. So it looks like I'm going to have to saw it off there and there, and either pop it out or drill it out. So. That's the next thing. Next thing is to make a new little um, pad to, to press on the cam. So I managed to get one of them out, I cut it off and I managed to punch out one of these pins. This other one though is putting up a bit more of a fight. Uh, I might just keep on using a bit more force and see if it actually comes. It looks like it's been an interference fit when it was pressed in. So the other one's out now, I managed to drill it out. So. Uh, I use a smaller drill, so I've actually not made the hole any bigger, so that's pretty good. So next step is to make a new little nylon uh, bush that goes in there. So here's my new block cut and fitted in. It's currently being held in by the 1.5mm drill bit, but it's, it's completely solid. So all I need to do now is find a, a one one point five mil um, rod, I suppose, a dowel, and just peen it over at the ends, and that should hold in quite nicely. It might be a fraction bigger than the than the existing one, but that doesn't really matter because I can always file it down. Um, and also, these points are actually adjustable. This um, this thing here. You can change the length if you basically back that off and then screw that round. You can change the, the, the point, the gap, depending on how high the, the cam lifts. So um, next step, find a pin, stick it back in 
and see if it actually operates the cam. Should be an interesting experiment. So now I've got a brass pin fitted in there and I've trimmed the block down a bit so it's the same dimensions as the old one. So time to give it a whirl, I think. So now we're back in the garage and I've uh, fitted the points back on and the, the new bush is resting on the cam on the inside of the flywheel. And if I turn this round, if you look closely, you're looking at the right bit, you say you're looking at that just there. If I spin this round, it opens and closes. I'm honest, if I'm honest, it's a bit of a surprise that it stays open for most of the revolution and then momentarily shuts because it's the opening that causes the, the, the spark, not, not the closing. But I still think it's potentially going to work. Um, so the next thing to do is turn my attention to the primary and secondary coil, which I've taken to pieces, or rather taken off. So the next thing is to have a look at that. Here we have the armature and the primary, primary, primary and secondary coil. The primary is the is the one which the points works on and the secondary is the high voltage which gives the spark to the spark plug and I've had a quick play around uh, either this is either I don't know what's going on or it's knackered because I'm getting no this is my little multimeter here there I'm getting no resistance between the primary coil winding and the core and doesn't seem right to me also the winding on this side and the winding on that side, no resistance. So I need to phone, phone a friend on that one and f work out what the hell is going on. Either it's knackered and needs fixing, or it's not knackered and I just don't understand how it works. So, so what I'm going to do, until I can get hold of somebody, I'm going to try and generate a spark in another way. So that's next. Now the mission of this video was to get a spark, so that's what I'm trying to do now. So. I'm not going to use the magneto because if, even if it works, I don't know how to make it work. Not yet. I need to do some more research. So I'm going to try and do uh, get a spark with a coil. So I need a battery, 112 volt battery. I need a coil, 12 volt coil, sort of thing you might find in a mini. I need some wire, wire, exhibit A, wire, exhibit C. Uh, that's to connect the battery to the coil. I also need to connect the coil to the point. Um, I need a condenser. Now this is an old uh, Austin 7 distributor um, and that is a condenser. So I'm going to take that out and try and reuse that somehow. And of course I need an HD lead and I need a spark plug. This is actually an 18 mil plug, which is the right size, but the reach is long. Uh, this is got the right reach, but it's the wrong size plug, so 14 mil. Anyway, it doesn't really matter which one, I just want to get a spark. So, um, next thing is to connect all this stuff together and see if I can make it work. So now I've got all the parts connected together, and it all looks a bit Heath Robinson, and that's because it is. Uh, but it's just a test, really, just to see if we can get a spark out of this thing. If we can, then we're game on. So I've got a 12 volt battery. The 12 volt battery is connected to the coil. Uh, that's the positive is connected to the coil and the negative is connected to the engine. The whole thing is a negative earth system. Coming from the uh, negative of the coil, we've got a wire going through there and into the back of the, the points. And all the points are is just a switch, which when the points are open, there's no flow, there's no circuit, so the, the coil is not charging. But when the points are closed, there is a circuit, so the the um, coil is charging up. And what happens is when um, the points open again and it stops charging, then the magnetic field in the coil collapses, and that's when you get the high voltage spark here. The only other bit that we've got uh, is this condenser here. This is an old 1930s condenser. I don't even know if it works. What it's meant to do is stop arcing across the points. Um, but even if it doesn't work, we, sh we should still see a spark if this is all good. So what I'll do now is I'll zoom in on the, on the spark plug and see if we can get a, a spark. Now I've turned the lights down low and got an extreme close-up, so I'm going to spin the flywheel and see if the camera can pick up a spark. There's a bit of a weird thing going on with the frame rate, so it doesn't always catch it, but I'm going to spin this and let's see what happens. 
So I can see a nice spark there. Hopefully it comes out on the video. Let's have a look. So the objective was to get a spark and we've got a spark. So thumbs up. Um, it's all a bit ugly and ideally I would be getting a spark out of the magneto. So I'm going to carry on in parallel with the magneto thing and see if we can work out A, how it works and B, if it's broken or not. But it, at the end of, you know, if all else fails, at least we can actually get a spark and start the engine with this simple coil system. Um, so I think the next uh, episode, I'm going to focus on the, the remaining bits that I need to get this engine going. Uh, I'm going to need a kickstart. I'm going to need an exhaust and a I don't know why I'm putting the exhaust, it's going to come out here somewhere. And I'm going to need a carb. So I'm probably going to buy a carb, I'm going to make an exhaust, and I'm going to make the kickstart. So I think kickstart will be next because I like making stuff like that, and that'll be fun. So uh, wait until next week's, next time's thrilling episode.